Good. I want to welcome you all to what is, I think, the first public event for the Center for Digital Agriculture. Thank you all very much for coming. Um, I'm hoping that over uh, the next uh, 24 hours or so, you will get a much better sense of what kinds of um, directions we want to take the center, but also um, find ways for you all to play a role because the center is really a work in progress and it's something that um, is not officially launched yet. We are uh, still working on the plans for the center. We are still working on a white paper to uh, lay out the broad themes and vision for the center. And so um, we have a few goals for the workshop for the next two days. One of them is really to invite all of you to participate in, and think about how, uh, what you would like to get out of the center, what you would like to uh, uh, contribute, and how you can help us shape the vision for the center. Because I think that this is something that we hope will be a long-term effort at Illinois that really brings together people from uh, engineering and from uh, the College of Aces. Um, so uh, we have... Um, a few people to thank for getting this center off the ground so far and the activities that we've pushed, that we've, um, we've uh, managed to do so far. First, I want to thank Herman Bolero, and I don't see where he is, there he is, he's <laughs> in the back there. So Herman and I sort of conceived of this um, about a year ago, created the proposal, the investment for growth proposal to campus, which was successful and which, which brought in the seed funding to uh, get the center rolling. And Herman is um, really one of the driving forces behind this. Uh, he stepped up to become associate dean for research in uh, the College of Agriculture. So in some sense, he's playing an even more important role, but he's just stepping back and not being the face of it anymore, although you very much could be. <laughs> um, the funding for the center is uh, has been really important in getting us going, and uh, Andreas Cangellaris was the Dean of Engineering at the time when we started working on the proposal, um, and at that time he was my boss because I was interim head of computer science, and he really was a major cheerleader in supporting this effort and getting us working together with Herman and Crop Sciences to get this center off the ground. Uh, but then later on, he moved up to, became, to become provost, and the provost office has provided um, a significant part of the seed funding through the Investment for Growth program. This seed funding is what is enabling us to, uh, to get started, to, um, to uh, lay the groundwork for both the research efforts and the education efforts that we are going to be putting in, which you'll be hearing a lot more about from uh, Matt Hudson and from me. Um, I also want to thank both the Colleges of Engineering and Agriculture, so Jen Bernhardt's office in the College of Engineering. Uh, for those of you who don't know her, she's the Associate Dean for Research in Engineering. She's Herman's counterpart. Um, and uh, the Associate Dean for, so, so Herman's office in the College of Agriculture, who have also contributed significant amounts and a lot of support for getting the center started. Um, I also want to give a big thanks to NCSA and to Bill Gropp and uh, Scott Wilkin. NCSA is providing us a very significant amount of uh, logistical support, technology support, staff support, space, but also a very substantial expertise in the domain. Um, they're one of the few units on campus that really, I think, brings together uh, the computing expertise with expertise in applying computing to agriculture problems through their industry program. They have several working projects with industry um, that provide technology services and, and projects, um, which you will hear more about today. Um, with that, I want to introduce Scott Wilkins. Scott is the executive director for the center. Um, he's also uh, part of the NCSA leadership, but importantly, he's also a farmer in his own right. And Scott owns a 2,400-acre farm down near Monticello, which has been in the family, I think, since 1936, he tells me yep. today. The Monticello, sorry. Monticello. 
And um, so he's one of the few people on campus probably that has both computing expertise and real farming expertise, and he's able to bring them together. So he's been an invaluable partner as executive director in helping us get the center going and running the programs. So let me, uh, let Scott take over. Thanks, Vikram. Thanks. So thank you, Vikram. Uh, very kind words. Uh, I am very excited about what we're doing uh, as far as agriculture. When we got started, Bill and I, uh, and Ed, actually, also, uh, Seidel, we, we knew that there was an opportunity across campus uh, to a greater extent for agriculture than, than was really realized. Uh, when we started, there was really no agricultural work being done here at NCSA. Right now, I think we're at 13 or 14 projects. Amanda knows better. Uh, but th those have been a great... Um, I would say base what we could actually start from for the digital ag center center for digital ag so i'm i'm just thrilled that, it, that we're able to take it in this new direction um, i do also want to be very thankful to kristen and amanda and marissa and everybody else that's uh, been able to help out to get this done uh, i also want to thank all the speakers i i know you're taking time out of your day to do this so uh, thank you for doing this because it's an important launch. But with that said, I also want to say it is my pleasure to introduce and welcome Dr. Bill Gropp, Director and Chief Scientist of NCSA. Dr. Gropp holds the Thomas Siebel Chair in the Department of Computer Science and was recently named a Fellow of the American Association of the Advancement of Science. Dr. Gropp has been an early and enthusiastic supporter of our center and it is my honor to hear from him today. So give both thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, really want to welcome you all to NCSA. We're very proud to host this first workshop for the forthcoming <clears throat> Center for Digital Agriculture. Uh, I think one of the joys in my position is learning about uh, uses of computing that I didn't know anything about before, and seeing the, the growth of uh, digital agriculture both on campus and in the engagement with NCSA um, has really been exciting and something I'm uh, both proud uh, and happy to see. Um, and there's a lot going on on campus, and so uh, I think one of the uh, great things about this workshop uh, is the opportunity to learn uh, just how much is already going on with digital agriculture on campus. I mean, maybe my message here is, um, yes, we're starting a Center for Digital Agriculture. Um, that's to take what's already going on uh, here on campus, if you'll forgive the phrase, to the next level. Um, that gives us the real opportunity to tackle larger scale problems, to bring more expertise, to bring uh, more resources to bear on some of the most challenging problems we have today. Uh, and I do want to say that um, uh, beyond even the, the work that's going on, on this campus, there is a lot of engagement in the overall community. Uh, um, I head the Midwest Big Data Hub, uh, which uh, you know, I lead that. We have um, partners <clears throat> at Indiana, Iowa State, Michigan, and North Dakota. Uh, and its role is to build communities um, and capacity to apply big data to priorities for the Midwest. And of course, one of those uh, priorities is digital agriculture. Um, Midwest Big Data Hub has been involved in uh, providing uh, support of various kinds for uh, nearly 30 um, projects to six different agencies. Um, and uh, one example of something we've done is nearly two years ago, uh, we hosted a machine learning farm to table workshop um, uh, in cooperation with the International Food Security at Illinois Group. Um, and uh, uh, an effort which brought um, one of tomorrow's keynote speakers uh, to campus before. So it was great to see uh, Ranveer Chandra uh, come back to speak to us about digital agriculture. This workshop really matched, marks the beginning of a new and stronger collaboration between the colleges of ACES and Engineering and NCSA, uh, which I'm uh, really looking forward to. Um, and I think that together we'll be able to change the world in digital agriculture. Uh, and with that, I want to introduce um, Matt Hudson, a longtime faculty partner with NCSA um, and the co-director of the center. Thank you very much. Okay, 
Thank you for the lovely introduction. I'm going to spend about 15 minutes uh, just going through the overview of the center, what we think it's going to be for, and what we've done so far. Um, so I have a few slides to get through. Um, first of all, I want to... Oh, just give me the mic. Both mics. No, just give me it. Oh, you have your mic? Yeah. Yes, this is a mic. <laughs> um, so the uh, Center for Digital Agriculture, the concept is that we'll help catalyze these relationships between agriculture and engineering in particular, historically uh, divided geographically on campus. And we're going to try and bring these two domains together within NCSA. And I have this definition of uh, the center, which I'm going to come back to. But first of all, why would we do this in Illinois? I hope this is already apparent to, to all of you, but we have a lot of top-ranked departments in, in both engineering and agriculture. We're also a huge center for the agriculture and related industries, and we're really the epicenter for global trade in commodities and agricultural products. So this creates a situation where we have a large number of companies in and around Illinois that are hugely important. We have a campus that's well known for all of the respective domains. And we, however, haven't really made our mark for digital agriculture yet. And it's time that we did. It's time we put ourselves on the map and said, we are going to be the digital agriculture campus. Um, I think that one of the reasons to do this now is we haven't been quite sure what digital agriculture really meant, and a few people have been using this or related terms to mean specific domains, and I'm going to come back to this. Um, but right now, researchers throughout agriculture, and increasingly in the, in the tech-related uh, areas of research too, are getting excited about digital ag because the problems in agriculture are huge and becoming tractable for tech CS engineering people. And the problems within uh, CS are becoming things that agriculture people are more and more aware of because we're using more and more digital uh, technology in, in almost everything that we do. Um, we're seeing a lot of startup companies and, and we're going to hear about some of them. Um, on our research park as well as further afield that are trying to capitalize on this and some of them have been very successful. And quite a few universities are starting to launch their own initiatives in digital agriculture or something that sounds very similar. So Cornell and Purdue have both launched something relatively recently. Um, we're not particularly far behind those places, I don't think, because we've been planning this for a while, but we want to take our time and we want to launch something that's very impressive to the world, hopefully later this year, in a workshop that's going to happen probably over the summer, early fall. So the reason for this workshop is really to get you all together, to get your input, to make sure everyone on campus is on the team, to make sure we can launch this to the world as a united group. So we have, as Vikram mentioned, 2.1 million in seed funding from uh, largely the Office of the Provost Investment for Growth and matching funds from the Colleges of Engineering and Agriculture. And we're very grateful for this. Uh, funding is tight and um, we want to make the best of this we can to make sure we make that launch as powerful and uh, impressive as possible, and to also make sure that everyone on campus realizes that we've done our best to make sure this money is spent well and, and prudently. Um, we also have arranged for infrastructure, financial, and technical support, which will be provided within NCSA, as well as a great deal of NCSA staff involvement, hopefully in the, the research aspects of the center itself. We have a, uh, basically the broad goal to establish ourselves as a world leader. Um, we have a, a series of goals here. I'm not going to go through all of them in detail, but basically um, we're, we want to provide the substrate from which a uh, flourishing group of digital ag researchers can become successful and hopefully go on to dominate the world. Um, we also want to help uh, both um, the public and private sector in training a workforce that 
either doesn't exist or exists in a, a very patchy way, which is people who understand agriculture and technology. So yes, there are companies that specialize in agricultural technology in different domains, but there aren't a lot of academic programs that specialize in training people to a high level in both computational sciences and agricultural sciences. So we were trying to take interdisciplinary education and also interdisciplinary research to a point where we're training PhDs and everything down the chain from there in a, a fused set of disciplines in the different areas of digital ag, which I'll come back to in a second. So, so far we have this landing page. Um, on that landing page, you will find there is a draft white paper, which several of you here have already put a significant amount of effort into. It's still a draft. We would like you to comment on this. We don't want anyone to feel that their stuff is not there. If you feel that your uh, domain has been excluded or misrepresented in some way, we want to know and we want to fix it. Um, at the same site, you'll find a call for seed funding proposals. Uh, there'll be a talk on exactly how to apply for those later in the workshop. There's a workshop, which you're at, and thank you everyone who is involved in uh, setting this up. Um, there's uh, leadership and admin staff already in place. Uh, most of the admin is being done through NCSA, and you'll meet those people here. And I'd like to thank the steering committee, who did a great deal of work thinking and writing early on to set this up. Most of these people are here. Um, those of them who aren't send their, their uh, uh, apologies for not being able to make it. So I'm not going to go through everyone here, but you know who you are and you all contributed a great deal to this. I wanted to spend a couple of seconds on what is digital agriculture because I've been getting this question a lot for the last year. It usually goes something along the lines of what even is digital agriculture? And obviously this is something that could be defined in a number of different ways. Um, so ultimately most of the definitions could include the fact that you used a calculator to figure out how much fertilizer to apply. That could be digital agriculture. So what is new about digital agriculture? And you'll find a lot of different uh, definitions out there. I won't talk about any of these in detail. The problem is all the definitions have issues, right? They're either overly broad, they include things that perhaps aren't what the center should be focusing on, or they're overly narrow and they exclude people and things that we think should be a part of us. So my feeling about digital agriculture is that a lot of people would come to a workshop or they'd see a center like this and they'd say, okay, well, uh, I don't know, it's Matt Hudson and Vikram Adve seem to be running this, so I bet it's about their research and nothing else, right? And this is what I wanted to make a point here. Uh, everyone is, is looking at a different part of this thing, this elephant called digital agriculture. We don't know it's an elephant, right? We don't know what it is yet. But everyone has their own little piece of it. Everyone has an idea of what they think their piece should be. Um, what we don't want to do is define digital ag as our own part of the elephant. We want to hear about your part of the elephant. We want to try and make this picture as complete as possible. So we sort of wimped out on actually creating a definition ourselves. All we're saying is Increased global productivity and sustainability needs the innovations that our center is going to provide. So we're, we've defined ourselves functionally rather than in any terms of academic domain. And hopefully this is something everyone can get on board with. And I mentioned here we have these initial themes. So we have to have some kind of structure. These are not like IGB themes. So I'm going to come back to the themes here. Um, automation, data, crops and animals, people in ag. These are very broad domain areas that we can use to sort of help put the right people together in the right domain groups. They're not IGB themes. They're not by invitation only. They're not something that defines the research that's going to happen under them, okay? And the automation theme, for example, uh, would include people working on robotics and ag engineering. It would involve people working on algorithms and computer science, and it would involve people doing automated phenotyping in departments like crop sciences and NRES. So in each case, you can see different groups that are going to be key players in the different domains. There's a lot of overlap. And the more input we can get on you for, on this, the better. 
this is the structure we've come up with so far. And please comment if you find it confusing or if you don't like it. We also, as part of this uh, structure here, you'll see that there are some blobs along the side. And across the top, there is the master's degree in digital agriculture. So we are going to start a professional master's degree program in digital ag. Um, this will be the main means by which we address the immediate need for a trained workforce. In addition to the existing CS plus undergraduate programs that are partnered with uh, computer science and various departments, including several in the College of Agriculture, and in addition to the PhD level research training that I've already mentioned. Excuse me a second. So here's another two blobs on this diagram. Um, these are our two infrastructure goals. So our infrastructure goals are a digital farm and a digital ag data collaboratory. Now I'm going to address the digital ag data collaboratory here and give you a few thoughts about what that's uh, planned. And again, I, I would appreciate input on that. Vikram tomorrow is going to give you a little more detail on the digital farm. <coughs> so the digital farm is going to include a customizable environment designed for multiple advanced experiments with a lot of infrastructure, a lot of substrate in terms of network availability, computing, and the groundwork to apply multiple different technologies in a farm space. What we're not planning is some kind of um, pre-built phenotyping platform or something like that that does a single job for a single type of scientific experiment. If you want to write a grant, to obtain such a thing, this digital farm is going to be the place to put it, and it's going to increase its effectiveness and lower the cost of actually building that kind of infrastructure. Um, the data collaboratory, the idea here is that, again, we have a geographic divide on campus, and we also have an issue where we have multiple different departments all of the students involved in this are going to be segregated into a lot of different graduate programs. It's often very hard if you're in a graduate program such as crop sciences to find a lot of other graduate students who are doing digital agriculture work. There are a few. You know, there is an increasing effort in crop sciences and digital ag. But if you have a specific problem regarding machine vision, machine learning, a Python library, something like that, the chances of finding someone else in crop sciences who knows the answer is relatively low. On the other hand, on North Campus, there'll be many people who know the answer to that kind of question. But when you have questions on um, crop genetics, agronomy, uh, environmental sensing, something like that, the, the expertise is relatively sparse in, in many of the more technical departments. So the idea here is that we're going to combine individual researchers trying to get started in digital ag in a co-localized space here at NCSA. And we're going to give people access to both NCSA staff and NCSA compute facilities and so that we can co-localize grad students and other researchers with each other working in different domains and also with some of the expertise that's already present in NCSA in digital agriculture, which Scott and Bill alluded to earlier. So I covered a lot of this already. Um, so essentially, we feel that NCSA can plug a gap that is an important thing to address if we're really going to lead in digital agriculture. It also means that not all of our rival campuses have anything like NCSA. There, there may be one or two places that approach NCSA, but um, this is a unique thing that we have in addition to the departments and the expertise and the rankings and all the things I mentioned earlier. NCSA is doing a lot of digital ag, and it has done for a while. So you'll notice this is the, um, the TerraRef phenotyping gantry. 
And you'll see that right in the middle, there's an NCSA logo there. So essentially, NCSA was providing the, the, the data uh, infrastructure for that project. Um, this isn't the only project in NCSA, current or past, that relates to digital agriculture by any means. I think Scott said there are something like 14 or 15 in total. Uh, many of the big ones involve either federal grants or industry partners. So many different NCSA staff in many different areas from compute infrastructure, storage, uh, security, uh, genomics, have already participated in digital agriculture and may well know the answer to your question. And there was an, a time when people would go to where the computers were because there was no internet, there was no network, you had to take your punch cards right to where the computer was. This model had some advantages because the people there would know about computers and you'd learn stuff. And I think um, some elements of that old model where people working together on computing problems, difficult problems would co-localize, I'm hoping is gonna re-emerge here. So how do you access the collaboratory? Um, basically, you can request access to this space and the NCSA staff time and the compute resources via the seed grant proposals that we're going to talk about. Um, if you're initially a member of the center, we're going to allow people to nominate students to join the collaboratory initially, um, and we'll, we'll see how many nominations we get. And you can obviously obtain a funded grant through the Center for Digital Ag, and we will then provide resources for you through the, through the center. And I want you to please uh, join us in these, these other related talks. And also, we, we're welcoming new members to the center. We're, we want to be, ex excuse me, we want to be inclusive, not exclusive. And um, any of you who want to join, who want to talk about potential grant proposals or potential collaborations, um, please let one of us know. Okay, thank you very much.